Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. When Jinhao released their X159 in an obvious homage to the Mont Blanc 149, the fountain pen world stood up and took notice. <laughs> To say there was a kerfluffle, calamity, and great consternation would be a catastrophe of an understatement. The only thing that kept the purists from having their knickers permanently twisted was the fact that the X159 isn't a piston filler like the Mont Blanc 149 is. I think I said in my review of the X159 that if it were a piston filler, people would be all over it like a cheap suit. Why are you worried about the pants? You hold them like this. Of course, of course. <laughs> and two doctors go by. One of them looks over, he says, I don't know what's wrong with that fella, but don't the suit fit nice? <laughs> but look out, pen world, because the pen company everyone loves to hate has upped the ante and come out with this, Majon P136, which is not only very similar to the Mont Blanc 146, it is also a piston filler. So let's find out if this $30 piston filler is worthy of even being compared to a Mont Blanc right now. So I told you when I did my review of my Jinhao X159, the upgraded version, that uh, if Jinhao came out with a piston filler like this, I think everyone would be all over it. But Jinhao, as far as I know, doesn't make a piston filler, so it's unlikely. But I mentioned in that review that Moon Man, sorry, Majon, had made a piston filler that is very similar to this pen, and it is called the P136, and it has just arrived. So let's open this puppy up and see what it is about. Actually got a box, and the boxes now say Majon. Nice, so they've updated their logo from Moon Man to Majon. I'm sure they're pleased with uh, being forced to do that by Kaveco. Not a bad box, and it says P136. That's about all I can decipher. Black with a nice design. And there's the pen. There's some documentation here. Shows you how to use a piston filler, how to use an eyedropper, the generic, and a pump filler. Strapped in there. Madge on, feel the temperature of writing. I'm told that that loses something in translation, as most things do. And here's the pen. I must say, it's an even darker burgundy maroon color than the Jinhao X159. So that clip looks familiar. Only two bands. One. One turn to get it off. And it is, in fact, a number six. That's what I figured. You can't tell if from the photos on the website because of scale whether this is a big pen or a small pen. Or a pig pen but it is in fact more like the Mont Blanc 146 than the 149 the X159 Jinhao is identical in its measurements to the Mont Blanc 149 uh, and this one has a number eight size nib you measure that with the diameter of the feed Whereas this one looks like a number six, a standard Moon Man number six. This one's in fine, but it does have that shaped barrel like a 146. It has the ink window like the 146, and it is in fact a piston filler. There's the piston going past the window. And I have ordered the wrench for this, but uh, it looks like it might not be coming for a couple of months. <laughs> they, I ordered them together, but them's the brakes. But we shall ink this up and do a review. Something to look forward to. The Majon P136. And what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. 
After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. There were two things I was interested in discovering when I unboxed this pen. First was whether this was a number six size nib or larger. And the second was whether this pen was the same size as a Montblanc 146 or a 149. Those questions were quickly answered as it is definitely a number six size nib and the pen is the same size as a Mont Blanc 146, not the 149. Because I had compared the Jinhao X159 with a Mont Blanc 149 and found that they were identical in size and shape. Now I don't have a Mont Blanc 146 with which to compare this Mahjong P136 to see if they are identical or merely just similar. But from the measurements of both pens, it's clear that they are at a minimum very close in size to each other. And the Mont Blanc 146 has a number six size nib as well, albeit it is in gold, not in steel like this one. And this pen is a piston filler as well. So let's look at this pen. Overall, it is a medium sized cigar shape. And this one is in a deep burgundy with chrome hardware. From the top, we see a cigar shaped finial that is separated from the cap by the clip ring, which holds the chrome metal clip in place. The clip is almost identical to the Mont Blanc 146 clip, and it's relatively stiff, but it is usable. The cap tapers up to two chrome metal cap bands, one thin and one thick. And the thicker band has a raised section in the middle that says Moon Man twice and P136, the model number in script. The letters are in Mont Blanc's font and have the same Mont Blanc cross-hatched fill in them. The fact the name here is Moon Man and is engraved twice is significant. This is a new model from Majon with the new model name right there engraved on the ring. So there's no doubt that this is intentional. Majon has even changed their packaging to say Majon, but the cap band is intentionally engraved Moon Man twice. It's like they're saying, and I flatter myself that we understand one another. To the world. That's a bit of moxie right there. And like Confucius said, man with hand in pocket feel cocky. Oh my God. <laughs> The cap tapers down to the barrel, which bulges slightly in the middle, like Confucius, I think, uh, to a, another chrome ring, which separates the barrel from the piston knob. And then the piston knob is rounded at the end in that classic cigar shape. The precious plastic injection molded resin is substantial and highly polished. I've inspected this pen closely with a 10 power loop and found no gates or injection molding seams anywhere on the section, the barrel, the cap, which is excellent compared to the Jinhao, which you can, even with this camera, see that injection molding seam right there and right there. You can actually feel it too. The cap unscrews with only one rotation to reveal the slotted ink window and the slightly tapered barrel shaped section very close if not identical to the Mont Blanc 146 and the number six size steel fine Majon nib and black plastic feed. The section is very comfortable in shape and those threads are smooth and unobtrusive. Let's get a closer look at this nib. It has Moon Man, Moon Man not Majon, and the Moon Man logo right there and an F for fine, as well as some filigree border work. The nib and the feet are part of an assembly that unscrews for replacement, swapping, or maintenance. And there are two notches in the nib unit, right there and right there, that will allow the insertion of a special tool uh, to remove the nib. And that tool is sold separately. But you will see shortly how that tool isn't really necessary. The section is a molded part of the body of the pen and doesn't unscrew. The inside of the cap shows a cap liner that is screwed together with the end of the finial and the clip with a brass slotted bolt. The cap posts deeply, making it a nicely balanced pen posted, but it doesn't stay secure. 
those cap threads sit on top of that little metal ring right there and the cap just falls off now you can give it a, a bit of a twist like that but still you hit it and it will fall off unposted the pen is plenty long enough to write with comfortably for those of you who find the Jinhao X159 too large for your hands this might be a more comfortable size pen for you I bought this pen from Mary's stationery store on AliExpress for $36.25 US and the pen is available with fine or extra fine nibs and in five colors black red gray green and blue all with chrome hardware I mentioned in the unboxing that I had purchased the wrench for this pen separately even though I bought the wrench and the pen at the same time the wrench is scheduled to appear in my mailbox sometime in the new year I think I'm not that patient so I used my Hongdian piston wrench even though it doesn't exactly fit this pen to take this pen entirely to pieces so let's look at that video right now okay so now I want to take this P136 uh, Majon apart and you might say well professor how are you going to do that without the tool well I'm going to improvise here is the Hongdian tool and it has that little hook on it that can hook into the moon man it's not the right size but all I need to hook into is one of those little tabs so let's take the cap off here and we're going to open up the piston you can see right in here there's a little notch there and there's a little notch there and the tool will fit all the way around this uh, when I get it but the Hongdian is a bit short but I can just hook in the one side you see the other side doesn't go in but I can hook in that one side and push down on that and give the piston a turn yes it's cheating and as I will comment on later I think that little tool which probably costs Majon about maybe a buck at the most to manufacture should be included with the pen Twisby does it so now we can pull out the entire piston assembly and the one thing you notice here is that that ring is separate so don't lose that I'm going to take it all the way off I'm going to put it there so I don't lose it and this whole piston is silicone I think silicone plastic on this end and has a little cup in it there as well that really attracts ink so it's good to get this out now and then and be able to clean that out and then there's the cam that fits inside that piston tube that when you turn the knob retracts that piston inside like that so there it is the unit closed this whole section right here is all what looks like to be machined brass and it's not heavy brass but it does give a little bit more weight to the pen which I find very good and also this is great for longevity as well because most of these Chinese pistons are all plastic housings or there's some kind of aluminum or something like that but this one looks to be brass so we're going to open that up this is as far as you need to go if you're going to clean the pen but if you actually turn it more that piston will drop off and you can unscrew this all the way and extract the entire brass unit and then this piston piece the cam shaft if you will comes out of the cap just like that this is all got a little bit of silicone grease on it I don't need to replenish that but you may want to put some silicone grease on this part right here this is the part that goes inside the barrel and actually contacts the barrel inside there so that's what's going to want to travel up and down so that's where you're going to need a little bit of grease run it up and down the barrel the cam back into the piston housing give it a slight turn to catch those threads with this bit back on like that and then we have to check to make sure that that will close all the way down so I'm going to give it a few more threads and we're just a little bit short and what I'm doing is screwing this down 
there and then engaging the piston on the cam and making sure that travels all the way down there to be tight and it's still kind of loose there so I'm going to give it a couple more turns there you go there we go now that is plastic is engaging with that brass and making it tight so it won't come loose and the piston is retracted all the way and then we put that back in Oop. you know you gotta not forget to put that ring back on there and we put it back in and then I'm going to use my half a tool here to grip on the other side and turn it tight again finger tight not herculean tight so the nib actually has notches in it as well and there's the other end of this wrench has the notches in it that fit the nib section but you don't actually need this tool to remove the nib just a rubber band and give it a grip with the elastic and you can unscrew it from the barrel and there is the nib unit the plastic feed there's two o-rings there and you can also while you're here grip this with your elastic a little rubber gripper push my knuckles together <coughs> and we can pull that nib out of there and so I'm going to do a writing sample with this nib for you of course but I'm going to also see whether my Kaigalu uh, long blade nib architect style nib will fit with this feed you notice that the the Majon nib has a little notch right there and a little shelf that the nib sets against so you know exactly where it should be that's really good design engineering right there the uh, replacement nib does not have that but the nib sits against that little point let's see whether it'll go in into the nib collar there so that went in okay we'll have to see how it writes and screw that whole thing back into the section there we go and we're complete and now that i've got the pen back together again let's look at some size comparison and here is the Majon p136 piston filler with a jinhao x159 a sailor 1911 large a platinum president and a wingsong 629 now let's look at them posted and here they are posted i must note again that the Majon P136 does not post securely and it's very long anyway. The rest of these pens post very nicely. And the Wingsung 629 here is the only bad boy of the group, uh, copying the Mont Blanc down to the three rings, whereas the rest of them get away without any lawsuits by ditching one ring or two rings in the case of the Jinhao. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. These are all roughly number six size nibs, except for the X159 Jinhao, which is a number eight. And the Majon and the Jinhao are both steel nibs, where the Sailor 1911 Large is a 21 karat gold. The Platinum President is an 18 karat gold nib. And the Wingsung here is a 14 karat gold nib. Now let's look at some measurements, and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Majon P136, and it has a number six size steel fine nib. Let's check the wetness. It's actually not too bad for a fine nib. And the nib is smooth, as they all say. 
but it's got some substantial feedback. Again, not unusual for a fine nib to have that kind of feedback. You can hear that there. But it's not an unpleasant writing experience at all. One, two, four. Good for you, Doug. Six, eight, ten. Well, why not? And the ink today is an ink that I think matches this burgundy pen very, very nicely, and that is Diamine Merlot. And here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com. As to line variation, well, it's very stiff, as to be expected. And the line this pen makes is 0 0.3 millimeters, which is a Western extra fine. Sorry, that's an extra extra fine or a Japanese extra fine. So the nib is marked fine. I can imagine how much of a needle point the XF nib must be. And for our quote. And for some reverse writing. Well, that's very scratchy and very dry. You won't want to do that. And for some quick writing. Pete has no difficulty keeping up with this fine nib at all. Now, many of you might like this very fine steel nib. There's nothing wrong with it, and it writes smoothly out of the box. If I were going to continue writing with it, I might open the tines a bit by using a shim to make the nib a little bit wetter. But since I'm not intending to keep this nib on this pen, I won't do that. But what I will do is I'll show you how I'm going to swap this nib out for a number six size Kaigalu long blade nib. So let's do this. So this is going to be a hot swap, folks. Put on our safe penning equipment. And I'm going to use my elastic band. Pull this nib. I'm not going to unscrew the nib unit. I'm just going to pull it. There we go. That nib off. And I'm going to line that new nib up with that little notch i'm going to press on the nib and find the sweet spot it's, all it's, right help me in with this help me in with this help me in yes, with this think of your secretary ah, yeah, that was a very good suggestion and push it in as far as it will go now it's going to be a little bit long right there but hopefully that will work now i'm just going to turn the piston down just a little bit to flood that feed a bit Maybe drop a little bit of ink through. There we go. And now let's give this a try again. This is the Majon P136. And now it has a Kaigaloo long blade. Steel number six. It's the same ink. You can see the character I'm getting out of this nib now. So thin vertical strokes and thicker horizontal strokes. That's the nature of an architect. So there we go success. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? I like most everything about this fountain pen. It's attractive and comfortable in the hand. It will allow the swapping of the nib with other number six size nibs and the brass piston mechanism works very well and gives the pen some heft. But there are two flaws with this model. 
first the pen only comes with extra fine and fine nibs which actually write more like extra extra fine and extra fine nibs that is a problem for many chinese pens but of course it isn't an issue if you prefer needle writers i don't the second flaw is the pen won't post securely it's really odd that mad john can copy every aspect of the mont blanc 146 but this one key feature a securely posted cap i don't get how this design error got past the prototype stage i don't think it's difficult to solve either again i'm no engineer but could you at least extend the cap liner inside so it engages the end of the pen rather than the cap threads engaging with this metal ring and one more thing hey magon include the little wrench with the pen at this price point which is roughly 30 dollars more than the jinhao x159 throwing in the wrench that cost you less than a buck won't break the chinese bank and while i'm at it the p136 isn't that much different in size to my moonman m800 why can't you fit this piston mechanism into the m800 i'd buy that for a dollar i'd buy that for a dollar <laughs> and there you have it if you like this video please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted and please look in the description for a link to gold spot pens as i'm now an affiliate of the online store and when you shop at gold spot using my link you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you you can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month and i guarantee i'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis badges and sneak peek unboxing videos as well and that just leaves it for me to say thank you for watching and that's all she wrote I made this